Hey, Nicole Holland here. This is episode 39 of the Business Building Rockstar Show. You're listening to the Business Building Rockstar Show, where your host, Nicole Holland, gets the lowdown from today's most talented, inspiring, and successful entrepreneurs on what it really takes to reach rockstar status. Do you want to get your message out in a bigger way by being a guest on a web show or podcast just like this? If you do, text the letters I am ready to 33444 and I will send you free of charge a guide called How to Be a Great Guest. Don't make rookie mistakes that so many people do when they're starting out. Get known as a great guest that hosts search for for free by texting I am ready to 33444. So to spell that out, it's the letters I am R-E-A-D-Y to 33444 and I will send you a complimentary copy of my guide, How to Be a Great Guest. On today's show, Wes Pinkston and I talk about what it really takes to succeed with social media and how to build up your expert status within your niche and why you should really carefully choose what and who you're going to endorse. Hey there, entrepreneur. Thanks for tuning in to the Business Building Rockstar Show. Today, my guest is Wes Pinkston. He's an inspiring young entrepreneur who focuses on building and executing digital strategies. He graduated from Chapman University's Arduous School of Business in 2008 and was a three-year starting linebacker for the Panthers receiving Hall of Fame honors. Most recently, Wes co-created The Broke Agent, his blog that's quickly become one of the top websites in his industry with over 100,000 unique visitors per month. Wes is a leading social media and digital marketing consultant for real estate agents and brokers and was recently named a top 20 social media influencer in the industry. It is a pleasure to have Wes Pinkston as my guest today on the Business Building Rockstar Show. Wes, are you ready to rock? I'm ready to rock and roll, Nicole. Fantastic. So tell us more about what it is that you do. What do you mean by digital marketing consultant in real estate? Um, Yeah. So... I've been in real estate the past three years, mainly residential sales. Um, Prior to that, I worked at Ironstone Group with my father. Uh, I was the VP of that, and that was more property property tax consulting work. So it was pretty dry. Uh, Definitely wasn't catered towards the more uh, creative digital marketing and social media things that I do now. Completely different day and time. Um, But right now, I've I've always been very... Uh, intrigued with social media ever since it came on the uh, came on the map. I've just been very good at it, and I think the main reason why is just I have I completely immerse myself into it and just have crazy engagement. Um, I'm starting to see in, in real estate that a lot of the coaches they they kind of fabricate exactly what it takes to succeed in social media. They create these very drawn out, more theory based modules. Uh, and really the number one thing is just creating great content and just being super engaging with all of your posts. Mm-hmm. I love that. And, you know, actually, I'm just going to, so a little off topic, I want to say something that really struck me, like you reached out to me to be on this show and I'm writing a book right now. By the time this interview is released, it will be live. And I'm actually using you in the book as a perfect example of how to get somebody's attention. So you just sent me a message. You're like, hey, love the show. Would love to be on it. Let me know if you want me to, you know, if you want my bio. And it's like, "Uh uh-huh, that's the way to do it. So of course you sent me that. So I'm like, okay, who is this guy? I click on you. I look at your Twitter. I go from Twitter to your website. I check you out. I'm like, heck yeah, you look awesome. So you engaged me to let me know you're interested in me. You're interested in providing value to my audience. But then you put the ball in my hands. And that is something that almost never happens. And people are not teaching. So I'm so glad that you brought that up, how people are teaching things that are this long, drawn out process that are total bullshit. Because the truth of the matter is you just need to connect with people the way you would connect with them offline, right? Treat them with respect and have a conversation. Yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing new. Like the the platform and the medium, it, it's compl- it's it's different. It's brand new. Uh, rather than talking orally, you 
you, you, you tend to type on, with your fingers, but it still kind of follows that normal progression of a relationship. Um, you, I just wanted to obviously reach out to you because you're, you're definitely in line with something that I believe in, that I want to pursue, that I'm currently pursuing. Um, it, just, it doesn't seem alien to me, but with real estate that I've been in, um, the average age of a realtor is 55 to 60. Mm -hmm. I did not, I didn't know that. I just, in, I'm here in, uh, in Los Angeles. It, it's a, definitely a younger, more hip, more tech savvy uh, real estate base. So once I started going to conferences in different cities and really mingling with the, the different agents, I realized what a huge disconnect there was with regards to understanding social media. They view Twitter, like with me, I can post something on Twitter, Instagram, all native. I don't use any kind of automation. Uh, I know Gary Vaynerchuk, he, he also preaches that. Um, use automation when automation is needed, but never use that human as never lose that human aspect to, to any medium that you're on. Uh, and I believe in that very, very true. Um, and it's helped me out tremendously. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely nobody special, um, but I'm able to get my message out there for free very easily and then it really kind of falls back on well what kind of content are you creating what do you stand for what are your what is your vision if you even have one um, and that's what kind of led me to kind of mentoring and coaching these agents and I think the number one thing that we start with is what is your why and that why is so overdone no matter what conference you go to you have all these life coaches and real estate coaches <laughs> talking about that why um, I've always been against it I'm always like I got it together. I don't need a coach. I don't need to be held accountable. I'm very, very tough on myself internally, probably too much. Um, but it's so important because once you really understand the why, you have that clear, captivating vision that gets you out of bed in the morning and it really kind of gives you that drive. And then you hear the speeches, you can kind of compartmentalize it and you're like, wow, okay, it wasn't always, you know, just BS. Like there is truth to it. Whether you believe in your why or not, that's a different story. Um, but yeah, just social media is, it's incredible. Like it's opened up so many doors and it's leveled the playing field really for business to business or just business to consumer. Absolutely. And also beyond that, I think, I mean, something that I've been working towards is, you know, expert status and authority status. It's like anybody can create their own celebrity these days. Anybody can make, you can get, make your things go viral, but you can create something that gets this mass audience that you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, just was unheard of. So it's pretty wild. It's really about consistency though. Um, if you're looking for that, that home run viral uh, piece, it's just not gonna happen unless you're friends with a very high, um, you know, a, a Kardashian, you know, a Jenner, <laughs> Bieber. Cool, yeah, definitely hit him up, you know, and, and ask for a shout out. But for everybody else like myself, you have to you have to sift through all the noise because once again, although the level the, the playing field is leveled, um, everybody has a chance for free essentially to post whatever they want out there. Well, then that means there's a lot of competition, there's a lot of noise out there. So, what is going to get that email? What's going to get that post opened? And then what's going to captivate them? Because the attention span these days, I think back in the day, like in the '80s, they said it was 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now it's like seven seconds. It varies from whatever source you want to listen to. Uh, all that matters is that it's super short. So when you're drafting your copy and you're making your copy, you have to really touch on those emotional aspects of your consumer, that avatar that you're trying to address. And every word, every photo, everything matters. So that's kind of what I pretty much help out my clients with, is really addressing those pain points and writing copy to where it's a no-brainer. And you just that's how you really create that authority uh, status in your market. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate that you're doing that. There's, we need more people like you. <laughs> I think the difficult thing with me is I didn't realize what I was doing. Right. That's the, always the toughest thing with me is that I know that what I'm doing is effective, but how do you teach it? And by being able to teach it, because I've had conversations with some very, very high authority, high ranking people in the, in the real estate industry. Like I have a seat at the table and the conversations that we're having it really makes me have to prepare and say, okay, get it out of your head and really break down exactly what you're doing. It may be, com be completely against what all these other teachers and self-proclaimed experts are talking about, but what I'm doing, I know works. Everything else is like 
you know, just a revised version of something in the past. But then you look at their, you look at their accounts and they have no followers. They have no engagement. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, and I'm surprised that nobody even calls them out on it. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're a, you're a guru. You're an expert. Okay. Cause you wrote a book once, but no one's retweeting your stuff. You have like three followers. How come it doesn't work for what, what you're practicing or preaching is not even working for you personally. And I'm just surprised that people keep booking them to speak. So that's my, uh, that's my goal. And what I realize is that it's not just real estate. This is small business in general. So although I know real estate, I know agents, I know brokerages, I know I, I work with them to help them tell their story, pick that certain medium that they're most comfortable with. Because if you're not good at video, you don't want to have a camera on you because I've seen some pretty bad videos. <laughs> Stick to pure text. Uh, but there's ways to have captivating copy and content regardless of the medium. But you have to go also with where they're at. You can't just be scared and just hang on the medium that that you feel most comfortable with. If your audience is not there, then you're going to have a huge disconnect. So it's really kind of kind of reverse engineering what they have and kind of picking the, the points to really attack. Definitely. That's fabulous. And I think, yeah, strategy is strategy, right? Whether you're on the football field, whether you're working with realtors, whether you're working with coaches, doesn't really make too much of a difference as long as you know where you're coming from, what your end goal is, what tools you have to work with, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and at the end of the day, what's your why, right? Exactly. And what I'm noticing is that or it happens a lot is that if you don't believe in what you're doing, you're not going to put the action forth. And if you're not going to put the action forth, you're going to come to me and say, Hey, what you told me to do didn't work. Right. And then what I say is, okay, I want you to document everything that you do all day. And then we're going to sit down and look at it and you can't BS that. So as we go through and we look at what they did all day, they did nothing. They legitimately didn't do that. So they're doing busy work, but they're not doing the stuff that gets results. So a lot of people don't believe in SEO, social media, why should I be on it? I mean, it's a marathon and you have to consistently do it, consistently do it right, but you have to really immerse yourself into it. Put the damn books down because it's all about experience and practice and just going out and doing it, kind of doing A-B testing, see what works, disable and delete the old one. It's not converting as well. And that's really what it's about though, is that people get in this analysis paralysis stage to where it's just, they never move. So it's not a hoax. There is a lot of value in it if you're willing to put the action and time into it, which very few are willing to do. So the ones that are, they'll have an incredible advantage. Absolutely. So let's talk about the broke agent. Where did that name come from? Uh, we were both, uh, well, like most agents are broke. Like uh -huh. it's, a, it's an absolute fact that um, I think Tom Ferry has a, has a statement to where it's about 85 to 95% of all agents within the first five years end up quitting. And that's a staggering number. And you have to wonder why. Is it that real estate's that difficult? No. Like, I, I think it's a, I don't want to get off topic, but I, it's a, it's a, there's imper imperfect systems that they have. Their workflow, they don't know how to run a small business. They're too focused on sales. So it kind of creates this perpetual cycle of putting out fires and not really feeling like you're in c complete control of your business. So long story short, it was just a very captivating name, and uh, we address the entertainment and the comedic satire that goes on throughout an agent's day. So that's the broke agent. Awesome. So where do you see things going? I mean, is this, if you kind of like found your thing, or I just get the sense no, that you're no, so my, creative. My, What's that? Yeah, my, my, uh, my business partner, he's an incredible writer. Like, I don't write all the copy. Uh, he is just blessed. He has an, it's, his, it's very similar to like Larry David. Mm -hmm. um, his style of writing. He used to work at the Laugh Factory, uh, never really had a passion <laughs> growing up to be a real estate agent, just kind of fell into it. Different circumstances led to something. Um, and we met at the same brokerage. So we were both just having a few beers and we're like, you know, everybody's so focused on the education to agents and no one's even addressing the entertainment. Let's just give it a shot. And the way social media is, it's so cheap. It's essentially free. And all you have to do is put content out there. So we put very, very engaging, relative, uh, relatable content out there, and it just took off. And everything was organic. Nothing was, uh, was we didn't really pay anything. Maybe a couple hundred bucks for some Facebook ads, but everything was purely community driven. It just uh, makes you feel good. Absolutely. So have you guys tried anything that didn't work? Uh, no. I mean, we've always had that balance about like how edgy do we go. Um, but 
at the end of the day, we were just being who we were. Like that's mm-hmm. that, that's it. Like it's we're posting content that we want to see. Um, the average age is fifty five to sixty, so it's like we're pretty much creating content, and that's like the majority of agents are that age. Like that's that's like our parents. So we're putting content out there that's a little bit edgy. And some people have said, hey, I don't really like the angle that you're taking, but that's fine. They can unfollow us. But um, I think we cater on the line pretty, uh, pretty well. So now what would you do if you guys tried something and it just kind of fell flat? What would you just say, well, we're going to keep on going because this is our thing? Or how would you course correct? Yeah, this is, uh, this is just one of many things that I have going on. Um, there's not a very large financial like input every month for what it's doing. It's all content. So um, we don't have this you know, $15,000 a month expense that we have to keep doing. It's, just, it's a really fun thing that we love and enjoy doing. If it doesn't do well or... We, just, we don't have like the craziest of expectations for it. It's, it, it's, a, it's a way to entertain agents and it's only going to grow and grow and grow. And then at that point, you look in a different kind of model. Like right now, um, we're offering quite a bit of advertising space on the site. There's so many different ways you can go into merchandise. Uh, in the beginning, we just want to see if people really vibe with the, with the message and the vision that we had. Um, and now we're strategically kind of putting monetization uh, aspects into it. And I think that it's just something worth diving into a little bit for the listeners is just that you mentioned split testing. And sometimes we talk like, it's kind of like when you know something really well, you just, you talk about it and you forget that people are like, wait, what? So I just wanted to point out that you're putting this stuff out there and it's, you're building the audience and you're building the community and you're building a fan base, but you're not necessarily making money from it straight away putting out first and then over time you are then able to sell stuff or you know get people to pay you for advertising or because you've proven yourself and I think it's just, it's very similar to podcasting or any other medium that people use to build their fan base and as you said before it, it doesn't happen overnight it is a longer process and it's something that most entrepreneurs that I've dealt with and I'm not sure if you can speak to this as well in your industry but they don't understand that. And even though we tell them, hey, it's going to take time, it's like two weeks later, it's like, well, I've already waited. Like, where the hell is everybody? It's like two weeks doesn't necessarily work. Once you start asking for money, though, uh, from the following, that really kind of changes the dynamic. And we kind of put off the monetization aspect because we, as millennials, you grow up and you're just like, I'm tired of all the salesmanship that's constantly going on. I just want to like vibe with something. I want to laugh without having to give you money in return. So that approach is what really ramped it up. We never asked for anything in return. And even in the beginning, we didn't even ask for an email address. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were just super informal with it, posting stuff that we wanted to post. Uh, But when you want to monetize though, you have to make sure that you're vetting all the content or, or the company, the product or the service that you're endorsing because if you're not going to create your own stuff and you want to white label things and you want to do uh, affiliate marketing, but you don't just want to sell anything because it, it takes a year and a half is, is kind of how long we've been doing it for. Um, it takes a year and a half to build that audience. Well, one poorly, uh, exactly one, one company that appears to be something and then you endorse their product to your fan base, to your list. They don't love it. It's really hard to get that follow back. Mm -hmm. So with us, it was very difficult to find someone that really was in line with what we were doing. Uh, We have quite a few companies lined up now. uh, But as a two-man operation, it was very, uh, it was tough. There's a a lot of things that that go on because it it scales so quickly. um, And yeah, we were just kind of bootstrapping things in the beginning. It's kind of what you have to do. Mm -hmm. So let's say you could go back five years. You're still so young, (laughs) but let's say you could go back five years and give yourself some advice um, about business, about life in general, whatever. What would you tell your younger self about best practices and what to be aware of? Um, I mean, I've always lived by the the code to to work smart and not just hard. Uh, I've come from a family of just hardworking people. And um, I got too caught up in the... uh, in the details and the minutia. Like if I were to study marketing or sales, I would just, I would overstudy for it. And then I I just, I wouldn't really just immerse myself into it. I let too much self doubt. I had, I suffered from a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, I was an emotional wreck. 
Um, but really what, what got me through it was this systems mindset about balancing the emotional and mechanical. Um, and now, although it's probably not ideal and I'm probably too mechanical, uh, to be able to kind of remove yourself from your, your, all your emotions in your head. Because emotions, if you look at what most people are dealing with, it's the underlying thing is emotions. And there are good emotions and there are little petty small emotions that are not even worth your time. So with me, uh, I've had people say that because I was born June 25th, I'm a cancer, I'm, emo I'm like super emotional, uh, which I don't think is the case, but I would tell myself to definitely be more mechanical, really draw out and have that clear vision of what you want to do, put it in a linear sequence to where you get that end result and just be super mechanical the way you go about it. Awesome. Great advice. And do you have any sort of self-care strategy or daily practice that helps you stay in peak performance? Um, I'm a big health nut. I, I just, I believe that everything is, a, it's a holistic, everything is so interdependent on each other. So, um, I don't, I, I don't eat fast food. I, I just, if everything takes incredible hard work, like there's no like special sauce. I, I talent is cool, but without the hard work, it, it means absolutely nothing. And it'll just whittle away. And the way technology is going, everything is evolving so fast that you have to just work your butt off. Um, and you need energy. And if you're not taking care of your body health wise, um, you're just, you're always going to be tired. You're not going to be thinking very clearly. So um, just evaluating everything from a, from a health standpoint, like people usually know what's not good for them, but they make an emotional decision or a convenient decision. And if, if you just put in, you just dirt in the Ferrari, you're just not going to operate well. So although, you know, digital marketing and social media strategies are so important, that's great. If you have really terrible health, I mean, that's, there's bigger priorities to, to kind of check off your list. So just view life in a holistic way because everything is so vitally important to the, the overall happiness of a, of a human, for sure. Indeed. So Wes, um, before we wrap up, do you have any last words of wisdom to share with the audience and also let people know how they can reach out to you, connect with you, and get more from you? Um, yeah, is this just take massive action uh i love i love gary uh vaynerchuk and what, what he's doing um i could not support his message more than he than i than i already do um just take massive action and just stop overthinking things because things are pretty easy like it's very very simple uh if you have a great idea which everybody has great ideas um you just have to execute and you have to surround yourself with really great people um and I've, 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 I've seen that firsthand. I've had uh, negative influences around me. You just, you have to hang out and just be around smart people that only bring you up. So um, really kind of uh, look at each little system that you have throughout your life and just be hyper critical and just be hyper efficient with the way that you look inside your life and you really kind of look at any inefficiency, fix it. Don't look outward. Don't care about what people think what people are doing, just fix yourself, be as efficient as possible, um, and everything will, will definitely work out. Awesome. I love it. So how can people connect with you? Um, let's see. I'm making a new website, but just you can email me at westpinkston at gmail.com. Uh, Instagram, I'm at the West Pinkston. Uh, I don't know why I put the the in front of it. <laughs> but actually no it was because of the uh because of matt and josh altman so it was kind of a it's a little what do you call it nod yeah a little nod to them so yeah twitter it's the west pinkston snapchat west pinkston and uh that's it cool yeah it's always curious i'm always curious about why people choose the names they do when it's not their name because like for me, by the time I got on Twitter, Nicole Holland was gone. So it's like, I don't know, something short. And my nickname's Nick. So Nick's the name and just a Z to mix it up. But yeah. Uh, that's, well, you, you make the name. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's not too bad. Yeah. But also, just one last tip. Don't use, if you're in business, don't use a Twitter handle or any name that's like, some letters and numbers that don't make any sense and are easy to forget. <laughs> That's great advice. I've seen some really, really bad ones. Yeah. Uh, and people don't know they're bad. That's, that's the thing is that everybody's so beautifully unique. Um, and like, that's the, I, 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 I've been to some really small towns and um, yeah, it's, 
I don't know. It's <laughs> I've seen some crazy stuff with regards to just how people view uh, technology and, and usernames. And uh, although it's comical, um, you definitely need to figure out a strategy for them and make sure they stay on the uh, on the path, and you can help them out. But uh, yeah, I've seen some pretty funny ones. And on that note, we're going to wrap up. And uh, I thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate it. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, make sure to subscribe on iTunes so that you don't miss another episode. And if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. And if you want to catch up on past episodes, it's super easy to do when you subscribe on iTunes. Also, we're on Stitcher. And of course, you can visit bbrshow.com for all of the episodes, show notes, and more. I would love to hear what you think about today's episode by leaving a review on iTunes, or also you can go Go to bbrshow.com and on our show notes page, there is a comment section. Dear listeners, I do this show for you. So the more you let me know what you love, the more I can bring you that. Don't forget that the Business Building Rockstar Show releases every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So three times per week, you can listen in to what the journey towards rockstar status entrepreneurship is really like. Until next time, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you and I look forward to connecting again real soon. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this episode of the Business Building Rockstar Show, be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you don't miss a thing. And visit bbrshow.com for all the show notes and links to resources discussed on today's show. Plus, lots more. 